One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Welcome to TK's Two Cents, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I take two tweets and I give you a couple of thoughts on those tweets. So let's dive right in. We ain't going to waste no time today. We're talking about why we need your voice and why it's a more important time than ever before to stop worrying and to start creating. Uh, let's take a look at tweet number one to talk about this. We don't need more bloggers, podcasters, YouTubers, TikTokers, blah, blah, blah. Yo, you got something you want to do? If so, we need one more. You. Get out here and create what you want to create. You don't need the permission of folks who are frustrated by their own issues with information overload. All right, check it out. Every year, there is always some new celebrity, some new actor, new musician, new author, new influencer, new entrepreneur that everybody's talking about. Oh, this person is so interesting. Oh, everybody ought to buy their thing. Everybody ought to watch their thing, listen to their stuff. And whoever this person is, there's somebody that we didn't even know about last year. They weren't on anybody's radar and now they are. And how did we get there? We got there because people chose to create things that were interesting to them without waiting on the permission of those who sat around saying, we don't need any more influencers. We don't need any more blah, 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 rah, 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 rah. For everybody that wants to create something, there is always somebody out there talking smack about how we don't need any more of this or that. And if creators and artists and innovators listen to those people, our world would not have the steady influx of cool things that we actually have. We make things so complicated. We have things that we want to put out there, things that we want to share with the world, and we suppress our voice, we suppress our passions and curiosities because we're worried about some stranger that's going to be annoyed by us because they don't need it. You know, I, I had somebody ask me the other day, you know, I like to give a lot of career advice. I spent a lot of years of my life coaching aspiring young professionals on how to become hireable, how to become indispensable. And so every once in a while, I like to go on Twitter and put up things like job interview tips and whatnot. Maybe I'll cover some of this stuff in the future, TK's Two Sweets, uh, TK's Two Cents. But somebody asked me, they said, hey, aren't you ever worried that when you give advice on the internet, you might be condescending to people? And, uh, and, and I laugh at the thought because that's never felt complicated to me. I've never hesitated ever to put out my perspectives. And what I told that person is I said, look, for me, giving advice is not something that has to come from a perspective of, I am a God and you lowly morons are all beneath me. Let me tell you what God told to me when I ascended to Mount Sinai and allow me to give you the one right way of thinking for everybody. Now, to me, giving advice is real simple. It ain't that complicated. It's simply recognizing and respecting the fact that as a unique human being, you have an interesting set of experiences and perspectives that will benefit someone somewhere. And if you dare to share that with the world, someone is going to find that useful. Whether it's advice about how to change a flat tire or advice about how to crush it at a job interview. And someone else is going to be like, eh, I don't need this. And eh, I don't really like what this person has to say. And I actually think it's more condescending to suppress what you have to say because you're worried about somebody out there who doesn't need what you have to say. Other people can make their own decisions about what isn't useful for them. Why in the world would you hold yourself back because you're afraid about some dude that won't find you useful? You useful. Everybody doesn't need to find you useful. And if you wanna be creative and get things done, you gotta get over this need to be useful relevant and interesting to everyone. That's not the goal. You want to be useful, relevant, and interesting to yourself. And when you resonate with what you're putting out there, there's always somebody out there that's going to like it too. But you can't take responsibility for trying to sort out ahead of time who are the people that are going to like my stuff, who are the people that are not going to like my stuff. It's always somebody talking smack. Ignore that and do what you want to do, no matter what it is. And you, and you got some people out there that are like, yeah, but you know, the market's so saturated now, you can't make money blogging or YouTubing like you could do, you know, 10 years ago. And that's exactly the problem. When money is your only metric, when popularity is your only metric, you miss the point. 
The point of creating isn't because you have some guarantee that you're going to get rich or win. The point of creating is that it is the best process of self-discovery known to humankind. There's only so much we can learn through thinking and through meditating and through navel gazing. All that's cool, but there is nothing like creating something or trying to create something, even if it isn't that good. You know, let's say you decided you wanted to spend a year writing a podcast, I mean, doing a podcast. Okay. And let's say every two weeks you put out an episode for a full year and your podcast never got like more than five views. And those views were from your mom, your dad, and, and, and your, your siblings or whatever it may be. Still, by the end of that year, you will have learned so much about networking, about how to ask good questions, about how to be confident before others, about how to facilitate conversation, how to connect with people, how to market things, how to produce things. You will have done something that the overwhelming majority of people are never even going to try to do for their entire lives. And a year of doing that is gonna make you so much better. So when you're thinking about creating something, remember that the pearl of great price, the ultimate prize to be won, it's not some guarantee of success, it's not the approval of all the elitists and the snobs who walk around being like, we don't need any more YouTubers or whatever it may be. No, it's who you get to become as a result of stepping into your dreams, facing your fear and taking on new challenges. You know what? Well, you know what's funny? Neil deGrasse Tyson, ever heard of him? Yeah, he had a friend in college who told him, Neil, your intelligence is too much to be wasted on. As a black man, your intelligence is too valuable to be wasted on studying things like physics. Yeah, exactly. Tweet number two. I've never feared sounding like a liberal or a conservative or whatever, whatever label you want to throw out there. The only sound I care about is the soundness of an argument. I'm interested in truth, not talking points. My goal is solving problems, not slam dunking on people because of their political group. So where did this come from? You know, um, I like to tweet a lot. I like to blog a lot. I like to podcast a lot and I put my ideas out there. And sometimes people crack me up because of the way in which they politically associate an idea, it dictates the way they respond to it. You know, one of the things I've said in the past is that people don't even respond to what you're actually saying anymore. They respond to the political party that they think you're representing when you say it, and then they react to that. They don't ask themselves, is that a useful idea? Is that a true idea? They're like, is that the liberal position? Is that the conservative position? Uh, and then they respond to what they think the agenda behind it is. But that's not the best way to learn or to have fun. I remember I did this talk called Dreams Don't Come True, Decisions Do. And one of the things I said is that you can't take an approach to life where you go around acting as if when you wish upon a star, it makes no difference who you are. Everything will come to you effortlessly and easily because the universe is this magical place that wants to make your dreams happen independently of the hard work you put in. No, if you want to create a result, you got to step up and take ownership of making it happen because nobody's going to care about your dreams more than you. And somebody was like, man, you sound like a Republican. <laughs> I mean, what am I supposed to do with that? Am I supposed to be triggered? Am I supposed to get defensive? No, please, please don't tell me I sound like a Republican. I'm going to lose all my friends. I mean, I don't even know what the threat of that is supposed to be or why that matters. But like, look at how that kind of label hinders your ability to learn. First of all, that's a useful idea. If you take that idea, that can help you create the results that matter most to you. I'm assuming this person wasn't a Republican. So why would you want to take an idea that can radically impact your life for good and, and, and reject it because you think that's Republican. You see, there's this idea that, 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 that concepts, they are the property of certain groups. You know, so this concept, you know, hard work, that's the property of Republicans. Or, or this concept, like compassion for, for the poor, well, that's the property of liberals, right? And, and so we get this idea that certain, you know, certain concepts are the property of certain groups. And we put ourselves in a position where we can no longer afford to buy into interesting and useful ideas because, well, since that's the property of an opposing group, they're going to profit at my expense if I buy into the idea. And that's not the point at all. The point is to learn. And how you think when you're trying to solve a problem, 
is so different than how you think when you're trying to score a point. And if all you're interested in is slam dunking on, on people of the other party, that's gonna cause you to process information in an entirely different way. But when you start thinking about, hey, yo, look, okay, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not reading this or listening to this because I'm trying to regurgitate, you know, some, you know, uh, uh, you, you know, knockdown argument that I can use against people that I've already made up my mind to disagree with. I'm trying to become a thinker, a clearer thinker. I'm trying to become a more creative person. I'm trying to become the predominant creative force in my own life. That's the main priority. When you do that, you become so much smarter, so much more interesting, so much more healthy and happy than when you spend all your time obsessing over the idea that I'm going to sound like this or that. I'm not afraid of sounding like a liberal. I'm not afraid of sounding like a conservative. You want to know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid of sounding like a dude that's too scared to say what he really believes, to say what he really means. I'm deathly afraid of that. And I think that's something that's really worth being afraid of. I'm going to be me. Peace out.